our, our next speaker is going to talk a little bit more about how um, how you actually uh, embed finance into the customer journey. So I'm, I'm very pleased to to welcome Justin Chiao from um, from Rails Bank, who's going to talk about embedding finance into the customer journey. Welcome, Justin. Great. Hi, John. Can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, I can hear you fine, That's and okay. uh, we'll we'll just I'll just stay on screen for a moment to make sure that your slides are appearing. Okay. I can see them, and uh, it all looks great. So over to you. Okay, fantastic, John. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Hello, everyone. Um, just quick introduction. My name is Justin Xiao. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Real Bank in South Southeast Asia and Australia, based in Singapore. I drive Rails Bank's expansion in Southeast Asia and Australia in terms of customer, product, and operations. A Rails Bank was established in the UK with a mission to be the category leader that enables any business or brand to rapidly prototype, launch, and scale financial products globally. Our vision is to embed a complete set of global financial capabilities into consumer ex customer experience empower any business to build and integrate any financial use case directly into their customer journey. Enable any business or brand to experiment, prototype, launch, and scale financial products globally. I have over 15 years of fintech experience. On the fin side, I started my career with Citi in New York and moving back to Asia in 2007. On the tech side, having worked at Visa for more than seven years, before joining Rails Bank in 2019. So in today's flow, I'm going to be talking about embedded finance for those unfamiliar or uninitiated. I'm going to touch on how embedded finance drives the consumer experience and bring that to context in the form of our card product and share how some of our customers have been able to prototype, launch, and scale on the Rails Bank platform using our APIs. So open banking was taking baby steps. It is non-banks that access data from their customer's bank account to provide account insights or trigger pay payments from within the app or website. How it works is that open banking providers connect to the bank system via APIs to retrieve the data. Often API layer between the bank and the open banking provider is provided by an API banking platform. And embedded finance is about business model transformation for companies. Therefore, it offers a new market opportunity worth over seven trillion in 10 years time, twice the combined value of the world's top 30 banks today. And companies are starting to leverage embedded finance as a new tool to monetize customers. And by delivering banking and insurance functionality via technology, Embedded finance enables any brand or merchant to integrate innovative financial services into new propositions and existing customer experiences quickly and at a low cost. And Reals Bank is a global fintech taking the lead in enabling sophisticated embedded finance offerings via banking as a service platform so that by connecting to us, our customers are able to issue cards, issue accounts, perform currency conversion and more. Let's so go to the next slide. One second. So technology is an enabler. With Amazon, technology infrastructure is a logistics and a merchant platform. The tech at Amazon enable entirely digital process so that anyone can be a, become a merchant. And embedded finance moves financial services in front of customers. And Southeast Asia has 650 million people from middle markets. Its GDP is ahead of the UK, but behind Germany. This is where it's home to the most vibrant and forward looking economies. However, it is also home to three key segments of financial exclusion the base of pyramid, women, and micro SMEs. It is here where embedded finance will be fully embraced and where the democratization of financial services can lead to a better 
and more inclusive society. So I foresee significant growth in the fintech sector in the Southeast Asia region. This growth will come from local and regional micro and macro trends, like regulators changing rules on banking, increasing adoption of super apps and e-wallets. So take the trend of super apps here. This has inspired our partners and customers to rethink the fintech possibilities of their business. And Southeast Asia is the future of global fintech. And if you can give access of embedded finance, you can create amazing journeys. For example, a property manager might want to have account issuance for every apartment that they manage. In the rental collection use case, they could have automatic reconciliation of rent collections, which would make it a great experience for the landlord and the management company. And with more data, they may spot trends on late payment from tenants. And instead of sending red collection notices, perhaps they can offer a loan to help the tenant or different terms of payment, deliver seamlessly and digitally. And of course, APIs are the fundamental building blocks and it's about Lego blocks. APIs are the user experience on the Rails Bank platform. So we make it simple and consumable. So we do not build solutions or do bespoke work for customers. And philosophically, the art of a quote unquote generic API led company is to design elegant APIs that support journeys, workflows and use cases that a customer can use and build on their own, they build their own solution. So when product managers come onto the platform, they know how to consume the services they need and they only pay for what they use. So the art here is to illuminate customers to realms of possibility and let them see the solution. And companies and brands understand their customers and they need to focus on the consumer journey. When we speak to the market, these are some of the common pain points that they have. I do not want to deal with bank platforms or the payment schemes. I do not want to deal with the complexity of costs of being regulated, with complexity and costs of managing financial operations, with the complexity of integrating multiple suppliers and non-standard APIs. So solving these pain points will enable our customer to focus on what they know best, and that is their consumer journey. So I wanted to go through an example of a consumer journey here. And in this case, it is issuing a card with the ability to use it instantly, spend confidently, and manage to spend effortlessly, whilst also whilst earning rewards and receiving the best in class support. So in the onboarding journey, you collect the personal information, identify the customer, perform real-time decisioning, on KYC checks. You issue a virtual card instantly, allow a pen to be set, allow physical card to be ordered if preferred, activate the card, lock, unlock the card, replace the card if the customer is into numerology and they don't like the card numbers generated. And this happens more than you think in Asia. Then allow the consumer to spend within five minutes of downloading the app with a card issued provision the card onto Apple Pay or into an e-wallet, view spending activities, receive spend notification, allow spend controls to be set, and transfer balances if it is prepaid or debit card. Then we provide payment options so that a consumer can pay off credit card balances for bill payment or do a person-to-person -person transfer to a friend. And all within this, optimizing the spend setting goals and targets, and make comparisons against similar demographics. And giving the consumer control in managing the settings in terms of notification, share payment details, and lastly, getting support through self-service. And if you need to contact someone, to do so through a messaging within the app. And this is all hygiene within the consumer journey, 
but there's a lot that goes into it. And we help innovative companies launch their consumer journey on the Rails Bank platform. In Singapore, with things like Aviva, many of you would know, they offer an insurance policy that looks like a bank, account, bank deposit account. And as a consumer spends on the Visa card, they enrich their insurance policy. And another use case I want to share is with our customer in Waystream UK, and they are a financial well-being platform, which improves the financial health of people and work. And they have employers like NHS Trust, Bupa, Holiday Inn that offer Waystream to their employees, giving them more power over their pay with a set of tools to track, access, save, and manage earnings in real time. As part of that, the platform allows employers to offer earned wage access so employees can access their wage once, they, once it's been earned throughout the month. So no advance credit or interest is involved. And it's proven through data to lead to less financial stress and less reliance on predatory forms of lending. And this has been elevated and shown in importance during COVID in UK, since they had healthcare workers who are working overtime and needed to focus on their health and health of others. And instead of using that time to ensure their financial well-being was being looked after by their employers. And I wanna to touch a little bit on where we are moving to and what we envision. So when a startup get off the ground, they bootstrap capital and invest in building their MVP and that takes months. And for a company, they'll take internal people and assemble teams and set them aside as skunk work teams to test out an idea. And what we're moving to is working with companies and startups to illuminate a use case for them and help them build the consumer journey using human-centered design. And we want to shortcut this with an MVP in the box, which will provide a unified experience that will meet and streamline the most basic requirements. So it could, allow, it, it, it could be how you perform EKYC, which is a consumer journey or flow that has very little flexibility due to regulatory requirements. And we can show that, we can reference that. And this is a way we're helping providing a turnkey, an end-to-end -end solution that includes a front-end, back-end for a MVP solution so that what you saw in the previous slide in the consumer journey can be achieved within a day and allow them to have this MVP within a short time of period without having to invest in a, a capital to develop MVP or assemble teams. And this can be done a lot quicker. And that is our goal. And finally, the if there's one thing you can take away from my talk today is to think about embedded finance as a utility and a problem it solves is running financial services. We're connecting to banks, the schemes like FAST, Visa, MasterCard, we run the operations 24 seven because money flows 24 seven and it is reliable and scalable. And we are regulated like utility companies and we have licenses from regulators from Visa, MasterCard and we adhere to global standards like ISO. And the ultimate goal of all of this is to let others focus on the consumer and bring the next generation of consumer experiences to market. And John, I'll pause there for questions. Justin, um, great. Thanks, thanks for the that um, outlining the the customer journey there. So I, I guess what what I I see from that is that uh, the bank as a service model that that you're you're showing enables people to innovate at the the edges by taking care of the the foundations. So um i i would expect then that there'd be lots of different uh customer use cases or lots of different um more granular um aspects of a customer journey that could be catered for because that that foundation is um is, is taken care of so um can you give me 
Well, you, you gave the sing life example, but uh, can you give me some other thoughts on where you would see um, the the innovation being uh, being possible for for startups, uh, for even companies outside the financial services uh, industry to be able to add a financial component to to what they're what they're doing? Yeah, and the, the way that um, you know we're evangelizing embedded finance. And letting companies and startups know that is easier than ever to embed finance into their consumer journey. And if we take first take a look at, at brands, and they've seen how you know, startups have elevated that customer journey, and I take traditional brands and how they've embedded, you know, how they've looked at financial services. So take look, taking a look at airlines, and the ways that they have traditionally offer financial services in form of a co-brand card with, with banks. And in many instances, they only lend their brand and they don't get access to the data. They don't see the data in real time. However, they engage their customers, you know, whether it's booking flights, whether it's you know, them browsing their app to look at future uh, flights. So they know a lot about their customers. However, if they're able to build a journey so that they're helping customers save for a trip, save for a flight, save for the future holiday, and they're able to offer a card, a tr you know, for example, the travel card with different currencies that they know, they know where the customer is traveling to, how about getting a card, locking in the FX, lock what you see today with Revolut and Utrip, that can be offered directly by the airlines and that can be offered on the existing apps that they have today. And so the incremental of building that financial service, have, you know, building a, a, a having their loyalty card with a Visa or MasterCard brand, they can do that themselves today and they can get access to the data in real time and they can be doing so much more. And as I mentioned, it is about business model transformation. And so they may have to view it as, hey, this is a new business model for me. I'm no longer lending my, my brand to a bank and receiving revenue. I'm now generating um, revenue through a, a card that I issue directly uh, to my customer. Um, great. I, this, I, I guess, points to any company that has uh, customers, particularly ones that have a large customer base, uh, can can think about how better, more ways that they can serve their customers and meet their needs, not just with their with their core business, but they can add on things that complement that uh, that that business. And we we see we see that with several several companies already with uh, Grab add, adding Grab Pay and um, extending their 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 brand uh, their value proposition beyond what what they started with. And, um, and having having access to um, the the tools and the and, and the platforms to to bridge that um, mm -hmm. is is enabling any any company with um, with a, a strong um, a strong customer base to to think more broadly about uh, about how they in, engage and, and serve those those customers. So yeah, that's. Um, yeah, and, 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 and fintechs and startups are taking inspiration because Grab is it, it, it's a ride-sharing platform. And what they have done, of course, is, you know, transform themselves into a financial services company. And, of course, you know, not everyone will have the resources of Grab to build a, a full-functioning financial services platform. Again, taking, you know, step-by-step -step and being able to come onto our uh, platform like Rails Bank, being able to um, access these basic financial services, and they can create fantastic journeys with, with you know, just the fundamental. Um, if you look at what it is, is just a, a ledger, and being able to send money, receive money, spend money, with these basic capabilities, they're able to build a, you know, a full set of um, user journeys solve problems for their consumers and allow you know for them to target perhaps a SNP is a a specific demographic that has a need or a specific uh, friction that they see within their consumer journey so they're able to do that quickly and again 
you know, they don't have to invest the, the resources to build a full function, um, full function solution. They come and they prototype, they're able to do the A-B testing, they bring it to market, they, they iterate, and then they launch and scale and then bring, it, bring that solution ultimately across borders. Every uh, fintech, you know, they have aspirations of not just in their domestic market. They want to bring it, uh, you know, not just uh, in, in their geography, but in maybe from Asia to Europe or to U.S. or to Australia. All the startups have that ambition. And when they start, they want a partner that can help them build the solution, but also scale across geographies, across uh, uh, their home market. Thanks uh, very much, uh, Justin, for, for sharing that. Great.